So in this project, I'm going to be doing the 3D version of the flange bearing project. So I've already opened up the project file. I've saved it into my home directory as flange bearing 3D. I'm in the model tab and uh, the view is already set to conceptual and southeast isometric. I'm going to go ahead and set my 3D layer current and I'm going to turn off my grid. I just like drawing without the grid on. So when I'm looking at this, we're going to mostly use two different commands. We're going to use the press pull command and we're going to use the revolve command. So this might be your first time to use the revolve command. So I'll walk you through it. Now, what we're going to do is just press pull kind of this overall base shape. But when we come to the counter sink, and the counter bore, we're going to use the revolve command. So I'm going to come down here to my front view, which is currently sectioned, and I'm just going to take half of this shape right here. So half of the counter sink and half of the counter bore, and I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to revolve. So coming over here, since I'm going to get my counter sink and my counter bore over here, let's go ahead and deal with this top view. I'm going to get rid of the circles that represent the counter sink and the counter bore here because we're going to do those in 3D based on the front view. So I'm going to select those objects, erase. So I've just got this here. Now I'm going to use my press pull command. As you know, press pull, we just click anywhere inside that circle and it finds the boundaries. And I'm going to press pull up and I'm just going to give it a distance of three. So remember this uh, flange bearing had an overall height of three. I'll press pull each side to give it an overall height of one. Looks good. Now I've got the, kind of the base figure here. Now it is three separate objects. I've got the cylinder and I've got these two side little wings over here. So what I'm going to do is union those together so that they're one piece. So I'll click on the union command, select this object, this object, and this object. When I press enter, now they're one big solid object. So I've got kind of the base form here. And that union command, if you forget that step and you need to do it at the end, it's fine. It doesn't really matter when you do that union command, just so long as you do it. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is come to this view and I'm going to get rid of all the information that I don't need, uh, like that hatch. I don't need the hatch. I'm going to go ahead and delete that out. I am going to draw a line straight through kind of defining where that center line is. So I'm just going to draw my 3D layer line and get rid of these center lines now. Just clicking on those and press and delete. Now that I've got that taken care of, I just need half. It doesn't even matter which half I keep, but I just need half of these objects. So I'm going to use my trim command and just trim what I don't need. And I actually, you'll see as I, as I do this uh, revolve command, I actually don't need this little piece right here. So I just need this shape. Come up here and do the same. So I don't need any of this. Again, I don't even need this line right there. I like to go ahead and just erase out what I don't need just because when I'm looking at this I don't want to get confused with too many extra lines. So once you've done that trim command, oops, I need to trim right here as well. And you can go ahead and erase out all this other business. There we go. So all I need is half of that countersink and half of that counter bore. Now if I were to try to do the revolve command right now, I'm going to do it, but don't follow, don't try to do this with me. I'm going to show you what happens when you do it the wrong way. So I'm going to do the revolve command select that object, press enter. These are just individual lines. So I'm going to show you what happens when you revolve just the individual lines. So it wants to know the center axis around which it will revolve. And you can see it's looking good. It wants to know how many degrees, so 360 degrees, and it looks like it worked. However, when I click on it, do you see how these are individual little pieces here? Kind of this little grid. If I highlight these objects and I right click and go to properties, you can see that those are surfaces. When you revolve just lines, it becomes a surface. In order to make it a solid object, and surfaces just mean this, watch, I'm going to click that surface, delete it, and it's just hollow inside. It's just hollow. 
it's just making a little surface right there. So uh, it looks like it's 3D. It is actually 3D, but it's not a 3D solid. So in order to make this work with these individual lines, what I'm gonna have to do is one of two things. I can either say modify, join, and I can join all of these lines, just kind of drew a window around all of them, press enter, and that join them all into a polyline. Or you can say draw, this one right here, region, and then you could select all of these. It makes a region inside of there. Um, hmm, it did not work for me, and I wonder if that's, try it one more time. I don't usually use the region option, and I wonder if it's because they were polylines. I'm gonna explode those out, try this one more time. There we go. That makes a surface. When you do that region command, it makes this into a surface, and then you can revolve that surface around. I much prefer, I'm gonna get rid of that, oops, I'm gonna undo Ash, uh, get rid of that surface. I'm gonna make these into a polyline. I prefer working with polylines. So you can type J, enter for join, or you can click on the little, two little arrows that are touching each other right here in the modify pull down. Select all those objects press enter and you can see it's one piece now. So now that we've gotten that into one piece, we can use that same revolve command and to find it, yours might say extrude. If you click on that down arrow, then you can just get all these different options and we're gonna choose the revolve. I'm gonna select that countersink, press enter. And now it wants to know the axis. So this is the center axis around which this 3D object is going to revolve. So here's my center axis. I'm just gonna go from endpoint to endpoint, click. And now it wants to know how many degrees do I wanna revolve around. I'm gonna make it a full circle, so 360 degrees. And when I click on it now, notice how it all highlights and it's not that weird little grid shape. If I look at properties, I've got a 3D solid that I'm working with here. So that's good. We'll come over to this one over here and we're gonna do the join command. Again, you could do the region command if you wanted to, but we're joining all of this into one big long piece. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, looks like there's like an extra little line segment there. Um, okay, so click on revolve, select the object, press enter, select the center axis, so the two endpoints of these lines cannot revolve a self-intersecting curve. What I'm gonna do is explode, and I'm gonna get rid of whatever that little piece, I think that little piece right there was just messing me up. So I recognized it too. I was like, ooh, I bet he's gonna do something to me here. All right, highlight all of those, join them together, and now when I select it, yay, looks good. So let's try the revolve command again. Select the object, press enter, specify the center axis. So we're just gonna go endpoint to endpoint. We're gonna type in 360 degrees and we've got it. This looks great. Okay, so I've got my counter sink and my counter bore. All I need to do is get them rotated up and then subtract them out from the base where I need it. So I'm gonna do the 3D rotate command, select both of them at the same time, press enter, and right in the middle of the two, I get this little circle here. And so we know we need to rotate along the X axis, which is the red one. So we're gonna rotate, click this. Again, I can press F8 to turn on my ortho, or I can just type in 90 degrees. You wanna make sure you're definitely rotating it at 90 degree increments when you do this. If you make it just a little bit off, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna subtract from your object or line up exactly. So definitely type in 90 or turn on your ortho. Now I'm gonna do the move command for this one. So I can just move. It doesn't even have to be the 3D move. Just move and I'll pick it up from that top center point and I'm gonna move it to, once I cut next to the edge here, I see all these center O snaps. I'm gonna move it right there. And then I'm gonna copy this one. So copy, because I need two of those. Press enter. We're picking it up from the top center point and we're gonna snap it to the top center point here and snap it to the top center here. And I don't need this and there's like a little extra line over there as well. So I've got everything where I need it. Now all I have to do is the subtract command. Now remember with the subtract command, when you um, 
start that command. There's a little strip of them right here under solids editing. So we've already done the union. Right below union is subtract. When we start that subtract command, I'm going to hit F2 on my keyboard just to show you what's happening at the command line. All I see right now is select objects. But if I look here, it's actually saying select the object you want to subtract from. So this is a really big deal here. It wants to know what you want to subtract from. We're so used to saying, I want to subtract this from that. So we would click on the counter bore and say, I want to subtract the counter bore from the base of the, the whole flange object, flange bearing. Um, but it's asking me for the opposite. The first thing I'm going to do is start the command. I'm going to select what I really want to keep. So what am I subtracting from is this base object. Then I press enter because that's what I want to subtract from. Now what do you want to subtract? And this is where we come in. It's a little tricky because they're sitting right on top here, but move your mouse till you can select. And you can kind of see it highlighting here. I'm going to select all three of those at once. When I press enter, there we go. It subtracted those three objects out from the base. Now one way to remember this is I'm so used to saying subtract this from that. So every time I do this subtract command, I kind of have to force myself to be like, okay, what do I want to keep? That's the first thing that I click on. And I had a student one time, he was a math major, and he said, well, mathematically speaking, that's correct. You subtract, you start with your larger object and, you know, your larger number, and then you subtract from that object. So mathematically speaking, that makes perfect sense. Um, so if that helps to kind of like make it stick in your head, uh, that's just the little trick from the subtract command. But look at this. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to hold down my wheelie ball, like pressing it down as though I'm um, just pressing a button. And you can see those holes went all the way through. You can see they have the counter bore, the counter sink. This looks great. And it was really easy to do as well. Just a few commands, really just three commands did it until we had to move and copy, but we did the press pull command to get the base shape for that flange bearing. And then we did the revolve command to get the counter bores and counter sinks. So that's it. You're done with the flange bearing in 3D.